Hey, what's up, guys? This is Alex from X Trades. Back to you with another weekly trade ideas list. This is actually going to be the second time I try to record this video. I had some audio issues, and by the time I got all the way through with the last recording, I found out that the audio did not go through. So I apologize if this video is a little bit late tonight and the watch list is also late. I did have to come back and re-record this. So today, we're going to be going over the economic calendar. If you guys are just tuning in for the first time, we go over kind of the economic calendar, what kind of data is coming out for the week. We also go over a couple individual tickers that I personally found out of my watch list. And then we also go over the indexes and the US dollar and also the VIX. So we go over a couple things in these videos. So I would recommend tuning in weekly. You might find some educational value out of it, at least if you're not actively trading and you're newer, this might be good for you. So for our first thing we're looking at here, we're looking at Monday, May 1st, we do have the ISM manufacturing PMI. So this can definitely move the market. You can see I have a three-star impact setting on this website. You can go down to two or one if you wanted to, but three-star impact obviously is giving you the most important data pieces that we have for the week. So Monday, we do have Monday, we do have the ISM manufacturing PMI. And then Tuesday, we have the Jolt's job openings. This can definitely move the market. The only thing is, is that we do have the Federal Open Market Committee meeting. So we have the FOMC meeting, also the Fed Press Conference. So this can kind of take away a little bit from the significance of the data because they may have already made the decision of what they're going to do with interest rates. And if they're you know, going to continue to hike, if they're going to pause, the decision's likely already made or at least getting close to it. These two upcoming data sets might not have the impact on their decision. So... A lot of times, you know, the market's looking for, you know, certain data and a certain bias so they know maybe what the Fed is thinking. Like if they're looking for, you know, they're looking for, you know, people to start losing their jobs or they're looking for, you know, the labor market to kind of wind down a little bit. That could be, you know, bullish in terms of trading because the Fed could pause interest rates that maybe they've seen enough to go ahead and, you know, start pausing interest rates, et cetera. Or, you know, if the, the labor market came in a little too hot, then maybe people might take that bearish because the labor market is not where it needs to be yet and the Fed could keep raising interest rates. So that's pretty much what people look for for data sets and they kind of tie it into the Fed interest rate decision. So that's why I feel like maybe, you know, these two may not have that big of an impact because we do have the FOMC meeting Wednesday. So that's all I meant by that. But yeah, Wednesday we do have the ISM services PMI. We also have the Fed interest rate decision and also the Fed press conference. So Jerome Powell will come out at 2.30 p.m. Eastern as usual. And on Thursday, May 4th, we do have the balance of trade. So I feel like this probably won't really have too much of an impact on the market. It just depends. And then Friday, arguably the most important in terms of data, we do have the unemployment rate and the non-farm payroll. So this is even bigger than the Jolt's job openings and also bigger than your weekly Thursday initial jobless claims that come out every week. So definitely to keep an eye on that. And this is also coming out after the Fed, Fed interest rate decision and also the Fed press conference. So this could tie into the next Fed meeting coming up, I believe maybe it's uh, June or July. So people might be looking at this and starting to price in, you know, the next Fed interest rate decision based off this data. Since, you know, by Wednesday, the, the last meeting had already happened, this will be new data for the next meeting. Now that we've gone over the economic calendar, so we can get into our individual tickers here. I'm looking at MCD. So we do only have three tickers this week just because I feel like tech's getting a little overbought. There really wasn't too much that I liked off the rip. I go over like 220 names or so, and I only found three. So it kind of speaks volumes to how the market's looking right now. Stuff's a little overbought. Some things are stuck in a range. So, And also we have the FOMC meeting coming up. So uh, there's really no point of over trading and finding you know every single setup you can. But either way, I feel like these three are pretty quality for the most part. So we'll go ahead and go over them. So for MCD here, we do have a trend line all the way from 2019. We got a second point here at 2021 and 2022. And then now it's coming up for a test three. So the test three is actually where any trend line is going to validate its trend. So it doesn't validate a test two, it validates a test three and beyond. So the test three trade is actually pretty good since that's where it usually, you know, determines if it's an actual trend or not. For MCD here, we're going to be looking at a swing trade. I feel like, you know, day trades may not be as good here just because, I mean, it's still kind of melting up, right? You got three or four weekly candles of upside. You got a low VIX. So this is probably not going to be like the best day trade setup in terms of, you know, for puts. 
But if you buy 30 to 60 days of expiration, or maybe even get 90 days, three months out, that'll give you plenty of time to work off this trend line. And then once it can get a nice rejection candle, you can see a move back down to 281, which is that previous resistance point right there. So we'll even go into the daily real quick. There's actually a shorter term price target that you could look at, which is this rally based rally demand zone to get a rally creates a base rally to the upside actually bounced off it pretty good right here made a new high if it can reject off this line you can see a move back down to this little demand zone here but like i said this this might need time because i mean it's still melting up you do have, i mean it just broke out to a you know all-time high in april and you know april's just coming to an end so it's only been about a month since this breakout so i mean it's like relatively new but it's been going for a little minute now so i mean it looks a little overbought to me this test three on this longer term trend line could act as pretty good resistance but as long as you you know buy time give it time to maybe make a top pattern give it time to reject off the line you could head back down to this demand zone and then if that breaks you can see that 281.67 as well so mcd i'm looking at puts on this probably strictly a swing trade unless i see some really heavy sell action intraday then you can maybe you know look at a day trade but it might need to get up to the line so it might need to get like a little bit closer to the to this trend line resistance and then you can see a quick flush or something but right now, I mean, it's just kind of freshly broken out. Might need a little time to make a top pattern, like I said, and then it could head lower. Your risk off, obviously, you just uh, you'd want to stop out if it started breaking out too far. But like I said, if you had time, even if it broke out of this, you could give it time to, you know, maybe come back within the downtrend line. But either way, your risk off should be if it breaks over that trend line resistance, or if you know your contracts, you know, get down to like 30. 30% or so, it's probably a good stop loss as well. But if you want to wait for it to get a little bit closer to the line, that's a good entry. So MCD, looking at puts. Next, we're going into PEP. So this is Pepsi, kind of a similar setup to MCD, except this time the third trend line test is actually touched. So MCD hasn't touched this third trend line yet. It's still a little bit more to go, but Pepsi here did in fact touch this third trend line. So this looks good for a potential rejection. Price target, probably looking for that 186.84 which is that previous resistance that could act as any support. So usually once you get a breakout like this, you will see a pullback, it'll try to make a base and then go higher. But more so I'm looking at the, you know, the trend line resistance. I'm not exactly, you know, just speculating off the fact that it can pull back. I actually do have this trend line resistance to validate the thesis. So if we go down to the one day, if you wanted to wait for like a nice reversal candle, like a nice full body, kind of with a top shadow wick showing that there's a rejection, like a candle kind of like this over here, or like this, something full body or something with a top shadow wick and, uh, you know, like a red day showing that sell pressure to pick up. There's probably institutions unloading supply, taking profit, and that could signal your reversal. So that would be ideal. So this is going to be another swing trade setup. You probably want to buy 30 to 60 to 90 days of expiration and give it one, two, three months or so. Uh, that just depends on your risk tolerance and how volatile you want the contracts to be. Obviously, the shorter the time frame, the shorter the expiration, you know, the more they're going to move, the longer they're more expensive. They take a little bit longer to lose and uh, it requires a little bit more patience for gains, but they are a little bit safer. So if you want to go, you know, two to three months out, that's even safer. And that'll give you time to work off this trend line. They would even, if it broke above, that would even give you a little bit of time uh, to you know, wait to stop out or go risk off if it broke out. If you took a, you know, two to three months of expiration, it could break out of here and hang up here for a little bit. And, you know, your drawdown wouldn't be that bad. So that's the good thing about longer term expiration. But I mean, either way here, we're looking at, you know, this third trend line test. So it's kind of similar to McDonald's. And I'll even touch into trend lines real quick here. You got to test one on this lower, you got to test two, and then look at test three. Test three is a really nice bounce. You get a nice bounce at test four. So this was a, you know, after test number three and it bouncing, this was a valid trend. So that's all I mean by the third test for trend lines. It could be an uptrend line like this. It could be a, you know, a downtrend line. It could be a trend line resistance. As long as you have three tests and a, you know, like a candle validation rejecting to show you the third test or, you know, a nice bounce candle showing you the third test is working. That is a valid trend and you can trade off of it. And the test three is always usually a pretty high probability trade because that's when the trend actually gets validated. So that's all I mean by a test three trade. And this indeed will be a test three rejection if it can go ahead and get that rejection candle. And that'd be good for puts. So Pep, looking at puts, just make sure you buy time on it. So it'll probably be a swing trade and need time because you, I mean, you are breaking out, you're kind of melting up. Same with McDonald's. I mean, it's breaking out, melting up. Maybe not the best for, you know, a day trade yet, but if you give it time, they could go ahead and start working down. You know, you could take profit at 186. And if, you know, if that breaks, you could maybe even head lower. So it just depends. That's for Pep.
plugin outputs. Next, we're going to SLV. So this is actually just a strictly silver play. So this is going to move just like, you know, spot silver would or move just like silver futures would. It's just an ETF. So you're not actually really getting exposure to physical silver or anything. I'm sure the, you know, the managers of this fund might have you know, exposure to actual physical silver, but most likely it's probably, a, you know, just a bunch of paper certificates for silver. So if you really wanted to get actual silver, you're going to want to go to a broker. You're going to want to find, you know, a good dealer that can serve you actual physical silver. This is just going to be a trade. So I just wanted to throw that out there, but the SLV, good uh, ETF. If you do want, you know, exposure to silver gains or silver movement, this is your, probably your go-to and it's pretty liquid. It's got high volume options are you know, pretty liquid as well. The spreads aren't too wide. So this is a good ticker if you do want that exposure to silver without actually, you know, buying the silver. Although I do, I do recommend if you want to, you know, long-term invest in silver, I would get the physical. So for SLV here, we do have this 2252. You can see it's acted as resistance here. You got another strong rejection point here. Now broken out of that, came back down for a break and retest. So this is a classic breakout, pullback and retest, and that can, you know, send it higher. If you know what a break and retest is, just a classic breakout. It pulls back, like I said. You make a new base off old resistance as new support, and it can march higher. So it's just a pretty much a classic pattern. It's good for you know buying pullbacks, not just trading strictly breakouts. If you want to wait for it to pull back into old resistance, uh, as long as you have a confirmation of it making a base, it's a great bullish trade to the upside. And that's what SLV is doing here. You can see also that it had the nice. KDJ crossed over to the upside, some momentum indicators flipping up. Uh, you can see on the four hour here, it's also breaking out of this downtrend line. So ideally, I am going to be looking for a move up to the supply. And another part of the thesis that you'll need, you'll need the DXY to probably go lower. So as long as the dollar is going lower, uh, you know, you could see a little bit of upside. But there's kind of some conflicting info on that. I feel like the dollar can definitely see a move higher. So you do have to be careful with that. But I mean, it, it just depends. Like, you know, it's not going to exactly inverse the dollar word for word, but they do kind of have a negative correlation. Like if the dollar goes up, metals usually kind of come down. Uh, if the dollar goes down, metals will sometimes come up, especially like gold and gold and silver kind of move a little bit hand in hand. So but yeah, short term, this is looking pretty good. I mean, I'm not expecting, you know, like some like huge move or anything on this. And currency volatility has been pretty low. So the DXY has kind of been stuck in a range, but it's still holding support. So that's the only thing I'm a little sketched out about. But either way, as long as the currency volatility is not too high, metals can definitely still move up, even if the dollar's still, you know, still trading in a range and stuff. If we even add this EMA here, so we got the 9 and 21 EMA cloud, you can see it bounced off the 21 EMA really nice as well. Also kind of got a little small close over the daily 9. So, and then you have a positive KDJ crossover to the upside here. You got your breakout. And also you do have a break and retest of old resistance. So you got a bunch of indicators, you know, that can potentially point this up. Like I said, maximum, you know, I could put it would be at the supply zone. There's even a little small resistance right here at 23.42. So as long as it can get over 23.42, short term, it can definitely hit that supply. So SLV looking at calls here, nice break and retest, nice little short term breakout. Just be careful of the dollar if it keeps holding the support and starts marching higher, just be careful with metals. But as long as it's, you know, if it's choppy and it's, you know, still, still holding the support, that's okay. But uh, we'll get into the DXY support at the end, but I just wanted to throw that out there. You just make sure you're watching the US dollar. Next for the SPY. So I think we were focused on this 407.45. It's kind of like a, pretty much like a structure hold. Like it, it needed to hold this 407.45 in order to keep a bullish structure. I said, if this 407.45 broke, it would most likely pull into this demand at 404. Did exactly that. And look, it just ripped to the upside. So I actually did buy the dip off this demand. I even alerted it in the Discord. I pretty much bought calls right around close. And then I just sold next day on the gap up. It was a little premature because, I mean, it rallied for two days straight after that. But, you know, I pretty much sold right at the 4745. I just kept, the, you know, the same levels of focus that I've been focused on. But either way, I mean, you did have this 50 EMA right here. I even did a little write-up on that. And also, I did a little write-up on this demand zone. So this is a classic rally-based rally demand zone. So you had the 50 EMA confluence as well as the demand zone, and that caused it to rip to the upside. So a great demand trade. I'll even go to the 15 minute here. So I bought calls down here, alerted it in the chat and the alert channel. And then I just, you know, as soon as it pulled up and gapped up into this 407.45 area, I just went ahead and sold. You can see definitely a little premature because this thing just totally ripped for two days straight, but that's okay. Still made a nice little 32%. And, you know, made some money. So you just never know because, uh, I mean, you could always, you know, sell a partial 
So you could, you know, let's say you take four contracts, you could sell three, hold one, or you could sell half, hold two, and you could hold for a higher move. Uh, it just depends. You know, the, I feel like the market is kind of at a spot where I just wanted to get in and get out. So I just went ahead and did that. And, you know, I'm not, not too stressed about it. I still made some pretty good money. And I can also show you how well this demand zone worked. So that's good. But right now, pulling up into this major supply. So this is the same supply we've been focused on. So rally base drop supply zone rejected off right here coming back to the same spot so if you did want to start looking at puts here for a swing uh i pretty much you know i would understand because you are in the same supply zone you can see you had a nice short-term reaction there you would have to take profit super quick but as long as you took profit on the puts at the demand zone we've been focused on or you know just the 404 level you would have been golden so you would have made a little bit of money off that supply sold right at demand and you would have you know, gotten out perfectly in time. Could have even switched to calls like, you know, we did. Make sure you're marking these zones. Make sure you're paying attention. You can see the VIX is getting a little bit low. We're pulling up into a major supply. So it's a little bit of an area to be careful. One thing I do need the bulls to see in order to start taking calls again, I need to see it breaking over the supply high. You need to see it make a base and then, you know, it can march higher. So you need to see just a classic break and retest. And, you know, that's a good area that would show structure holding. As long as it's holding the supply high and that's going to be about you know 418 419 or so so if it's making a base off that good chance that you can go higher otherwise i mean look at this as potential resistance be really careful with calls here realize that the past two days has literally gone up almost three percent in two candles so you do have to be careful i wouldn't just start chasing calls here maybe wait for it to break out of the high once it pulls back then you buy there and then it can go higher so you're buying pullbacks not buying breakouts not really a breakout type of market with interest rates going up and you know they're likely going to be held at five percent plus for a while so uh, it puts pressure on you know earnings it puts pressure on companies and hiring it costs more to borrow money etc so it just makes the markets a little bit tougher to trade it's definitely not like a 2020 to 2021 pandemic highs where you can just literally buy every breakout and it works it's not, it's not like that anymore you want to wait for it to break out you want to wait for a pullback buy off a base acting as new support and then it can go higher and i can even show you uh, an example of what, why you would do that here so you got the resistance broke out pulled back into that made a base ran into supply and it acted as support a couple of times and yeah so just wait for that you know supply high to get taken out if you want to get more bullish otherwise i feel like this looks good for you know if you want to start a position for puts and your risk off would literally just be if it broke out of the high and that's a you know pretty good risk to reward you could head all the way back down to demand and you'd have your stop loss slightly above 419 if it you know gets above 419 so what you know start small and maybe once you get a red day you can start pricing it a little bit more you could add more contracts but if you want to start small up here good area to do it vix is low uh, we're at a major supply we're not broken out yet so good risk to reward here if you did want to go short obviously with the fomc meeting you might not want to do that you know with a large position but if you did want to go smaller this is a pretty good discount area to look at shorts that's all I meant by that, but you know how I feel about swinging through events. I'm not a fan of it. If you do, just make sure you go small, buy time on the contracts. If you do have time on your contracts, the event risk is not as bad. The volatility is not as bad and your drawdown on the contracts won't be as bad if you're wrong. As for the SPY, like I said, just wait for the supply high to get taken out. Or if you want to start a position here, just start small. You know, make sure your risk off is above the breakout. Next, we're going into the QQQ. So I actually like this one a little bit better than the SPY. And the reason for that is because it's now broken and closed over that 321.51 we've been focusing on, focused on for a couple of weeks. So it's the same level from over here, rejected here also, also rejected right here. And that's that 321.51. And you can see it closed above that. So now you want to see exactly what we saw over here. You want to see that breakout you want to see a retest make a new base you want to see the same thing up here so the same thing we saw off the 313.68 got previous resistance acting as new support you want to see that up here you want to see this previous resistance acting as new support i'll even draw it out so you got previous resistance you got a rejection here rejection here you want to see a base get made off this in order to go higher and that's usually that's a good sign of structure so you want to see markets holding structure you don't want to see it just blasting off because you know the higher it goes the you know the harder it can fall but if you do have good structure like this you know you're making a base you know you're gonna be able to go a little bit higher because you do have more liquidity you have more support you have more institutions trying to bid at the same level 
and it will hold a little bit better than if it were to just you know, go to the moon above a breakout. So that's all I mean by that. And for price targets, you can see how this this free space above 321.51, because you see there's nothing over here. There's no major resistance until you get up to this 330s area, and that's that supply. So I feel like as long as it can make the base off 321.51, like I was just showing you, you have a pretty good shot, you know, of getting up to the supply. And that's probably about as high as I could put it. But as long as this is holding, and you're holding above 321.51, I mean, the sky's the limit, at least up to, you know, 330s. That's a pretty good free space for bowls. And I think the reason why the QQQ looks so much better is because of these damn tech earnings that, you know, people are so optimistic about. You got Microsoft, you know, trading up 10% after earnings. You got, you know, Meta trading 10% plus after. I mean, you just got all these crazy tech names, except for Amazon, of course. All the tech names doing good. But then you have no market breadth on anything else. You got a bunch of sectors down in the S&P, and then you have the tech names up. That's why you saw that the SPY wasn't able to break out yet because yeah, I mean the spy is made up of way way more sectors than just tech but then you got QQQ where it's just straight tech and you know those big tech names that did good for earnings is the reason why it's able to break out here so you want to see that 321.51 hold make a base and it can head up to the 330s over time I would say it's not just going to happen in two days maybe with the FOMC meeting if people are overly bullish you know I could see it getting up there pretty quick but uh, honestly you want this area to hit slowly but surely you don't want to get up here too fast because like I said, if it gets up too fast, so like right here, uh, it got up way too fast. Look at the pullback. I mean, it's just heavy. Price is getting up way too fast up here. Heavy pullback. But now you got, you know, slower structures holding up here. As long as it's making nice, slow structures and making lower highs. Uh, I'm sorry, higher lows and higher highs. You, you know, you're looking good. You got good structure. And the market maybe won't, you know, fall as fast as it you know would if it was just going straight up like this. So that's all I mean by that. You do want to see this 330s hit eventually, but, you know, maybe just at a pace, maybe nice and slow, not just, you know, fully degening up to 330. That's all I meant by that. But if 321.51, if it does go back under, obviously it's just going to be the same. If it goes back under the 321.51, that means it's back within the sale imbalance area. It'll probably go back down to 313.68. The same support, same area we've been focused on for the past couple of weeks. So you do want to see it holding over that 321.51. That gives you a shot up to 330s. If not, if it goes back under that, look for that 313.68 to hit. Next, we're going into the IWM. So actually, I accidentally deleted this trend line because this is the second time going through the video and I deleted it in the last recording. So I'm going to go ahead and re-add it. We did have an alert on this trend line. So once it broke, you can see, I mean, just a nice quick flush. You would have had to been out within two days. But... Overall, once this broke, the price target was 172.53 and, you know, just the general 170s. And you can see once it got down to the 172.53 and the 170s, nice two-day bounce here. Highest I could put IWM now that it's bounced off support. I could put it at the downtrend line, but I would have to see, you know, I'd have to see a breakout, you know, back test and then get over 179.26, which is the same resistance we've been focused on the last couple of weeks. You got a rejection here, rejection here. Got a rejection here as well. So you have three rejections at 179.26. You'll need to get over 179.26 and also the daily 200 SMA to be bullish as well as break out of the downtrend line. So that's why I can only put us at the downtrend line maximum where we see this little small projection. It would need to do this projection right here in order to go higher. But yeah, I mean, it's the trade for the puts already happened. We already set the alert. The breakdown already happened. You already got a nice flush and the price targets already hit. So that trades out the window now. And now, you know, we're pretty far off support as well. I wouldn't want to just buy calls in the middle of a range. I usually like to trade right at the support so you get the best risk to reward. And then, you know, you could trade back up to resistance. But it's already mid-range. So I personally probably won't look at any IWN trades this week until it, you know, can break out. And then once it breaks out, maybe a good call trade. But in the last recording when i tried to record i did go ahead and set an alert at this downtrend line so we just set the alert and named it breakout but yeah i mean just wait for the breakout on this uh like i said maximum i could put it is at the downtrend line if you can get a nice rejection candle or a nice 15 to 30 minute candle rejecting off the line might be a good put trade down back down to 172.53 and the 170.34 because I mean, like I said, you are still trading under the 50 EMA, you're still trading under the 200 SMA, and you're also still under major 179.26 resistance, which is pretty recent. So 
I mean, puts could still be pretty good. You just don't want to buy them in, you know, into 172s, uh, you know, into 170s, et cetera, just because it's bounced off this area so many times. You just don't know how it's going to react. That's why you want to wait till it gets resistance, wait till it gets the downtrend line, and that's a good area to start looking at puts. So yeah, maybe just need a little bit more data for IWM. Wait for that alert, wait for the trend line to hit, wait for it to break out, et cetera. All right, and next we're looking at the VIX. So I want to zoom out a little bit here because last week our focus level was 1634 it needed to hold that minimum in order to go higher it tried to but now that it's broken under you can see it's got a daily close under 1634 vix closed as low as 1577 on friday so now that this 1634 which came from this december 2021 level this is that green line right there that now brings us down to this red line at 1473, which is also a November 2021 low, and it looks like also an October 2021 low. So now that this level has broken from 2021, that really only puts you down to the next base at 1473. So it looks like the VIX can definitely go lower here. And if you guys watch weekly, you know my psychological level and my you know my bearish signal for the markets is obviously with you know VIX over 20, and you want to see a daily candle close over 20, and that's pretty much what I've been preaching. Otherwise, right now your levels of focus, you, you can maybe see a VIX reversal at 15 even or the 1473. So if you just want to make a zone at you know 1473 to 15, that's a good area that the VIX could bounce, and you know that could bring volatility up just a little bit. But this is like really low levels, guys. This means the S and P is gonna you know feel like a, you're trading a turtle. It's going to feel a little bit slow and, you know, markets can definitely melt up in these kind of conditions. So that's just for the S&P. When we're talking about the VIX, we're talking about the SPY, the SPX, you know, the ES futures, etc. So, I mean, if, if the SPY does get slow and the VIX gets too low, there is other stuff to trade. You can start looking at tech names. You can start, you know, maybe looking at the IWM instead. Uh, you can look at individual tickers that have a little bit more implied volatility or have a better setup. But when we're talking about the VIX, we're strictly talking about the S&P. And I mean, I, that can give you, you know, a general idea into how volatility is for the overall market, but there still is other things to trade. So I don't want you to feel discouraged if the VIX gets so low. I mean, it gets too low to start picking up calls. You don't want to, I mean, when the VIX gets this low, it usually starts snapping back. You know what I mean? So you don't want to chase calls without, you know, the proper confirmation. And I showed you the proper confirmation. It's going to be over, you know, like 418, 419. And, you know, with the VIX this low, there's always a chance it could snap back up. But right now, I mean, it looks like it's a straight shot down to 15 and the 1473, which is that December 21, 2021 level I showed you. And like I said, I mean, you don't have a bear signal until you get over that 20 psychological level. And you can see, I mean, it had trouble over here with the 20s and then it topped out at 1986. So it actually tried to bounce last week on Tuesday. When we got that little pullback into demand on the spy, it tried to, but it was not able to close above 20. And look what happened when it couldn't close over 20, literally just dumped for two days straight. So that's why that 20 psychological level is, I'm going to stand by that. You want to wait for it to get over 20. And that's, you know, that's your time to start looking at insurance for your portfolio. It's the time to start looking at shorts when you start getting a closer to over 20. And if you can get that closer to over 20, obviously that can take you up to the you know 2022 to 2023 average close, which is currently at 2431. You do you want to see it reclaiming over 1634 if you want to see the market come down, by the way. So if you want to see the market come down, you want to see it getting back over 1634, same level of focus as last week. Then you need to see it getting over 1706, which comes from this peak right here. And you'll need to get over 1811. 11, which comes from these two little bottoms right here and then you'll need it to get over you know 20 or the 19s so the vix will have to do a lot here in order to see the market come lower ideally though like i said you could maybe look for a reversal signal down at 15 to 1473 that's probably going to be a bottom for the vix to be honest that's when i would start being a little bit careful with longs because volatility is so low and eventually it does come back up for a mean regression and that's why we have our you know average close data right here and you could also use the moving averages like you use the 50 ema or you could use the 200 sma that's also a good mean regression target whatever you got to do but like i said just be careful here volatility is getting low maybe find something other than the spire to trade wait for it to come back to life wait for the vix to come back to life and you'll have better trades that's what we did last week. I mean, we waited for the VIX to pop a little bit. Uh, it pulled into demand. We bought in demand, sold on a gap up the next day. And it, I mean, I had a good two days following after that. Even though we sold out a little early, still caught the move. So that's for the VIX. 
Just need to see a little bit more from it. Next, we're going into the DXY. So my outlook has not changed on this because this is literally the same range as last week's video. So you can see Monday here, uh, we're looking at Sunday. So, I mean, this is literally the same exact range as last week. So my thesis has not changed. I feel like the dollar can definitely still go higher as long as this 182 support is holding. And as long as this 101.29 base is holding, which is the same base we go over every freaking week, uh, probably for the last couple months, comes from this base over here. So that base from over there and also this recent low at 182, that's your support. And you can see it's also breaking out here. So you got it breaking out. You also have a MACD signal. Go ahead and add it. So you still have the MACD signal holding right here. This means that the MACD crossed to the upside, this little green arrow. That's the little MACD crossed to the downside. So currently it's in a, you know, positive crossed up. So this means, you know, momentum could be giving an early signal that, you know, it could start curling up. But right now, currency volatility is pretty low. It looks like maybe people are trading other currencies, finding volatility elsewhere, because you're definitely not finding it in the US dollar lately. It's just been kind of stuck in a range. But I mean, the setup is there that could break out. And it kind of looks like, you know, that setup I showed you on silver short term, just got a little breakout. But I mean, this is more at lows and silver is still holding structure. So I think silver looks better. But either way, as long as this support's holding, as long as this breakout's holding, as long as this MACD signal is holding and other, you know, like the KDJ oscillator still positive, I feel like this can, you know, this can definitely elevate higher and it'll probably go back up to the 103s. And the 103 is the same price target, uh, you know, I've been focused on for a while now, it's kind of a pretty important inflection point. It's the 2020 COVID peak. So you got the 2020 COVID peak over here. It's 103 even. And, you know, if it starts getting back over that, that's when we st should start being a little bit more worried. But that's probably about as high as I could put the dollar for right now. I need to see it get over 103 and then maybe I could put us higher. But right now, that's my maximum price target. Maybe even like the 50 EMA right here. That could also be a good price target. But either way, it's still holding support. It's still holding structure. Hasn't broken down the structure or anything yet and overall still holding uh so maybe the fomc meeting this week this will kind of be the decision maker for the dollar if it's either going to die here and you know start heading lower that'd be good for stocks or you know if the fed totally makes the markets panic you'll probably start seeing currency currency start spiking back up probably start seeing the dollar spike and you'll see a little bit more currency volatility due to the fed but we'll have to see right now still holding structure can't really see anything other than it could, you know, go a little higher just because it's still holding. You got the breakout and you have a MACD signal to the upside. And that's for the US dollar. So that kind of plays into silver, like I was saying. If you do want to see silver go higher, it'd be good if, you know, DXY just stays chopped like this and maybe even goes lower as well. But I mean, as long as, you know, it's not going too crazy to the upside. And also, you know, maybe staying in a range, that's, that's pretty good for other metals. You might see, you know, the GLD or, you know, gold and silver in general move. Uh, but if you start seeing the dollar go up too high, you know, just maybe stay away from metals because it can get a little bit ugly for metals because people are, you know, jumping into the dollar and that will bring metals down. So just make sure you pay attention to this when you're trading metals. But that's all I got for you guys tonight. Hopefully this audio finally worked. I'm about to go ahead and check it, get it chopped up, edited and sent out and get the watch list up for you guys. It's going to be a little bit later tonight. I apologize, but you know, I tried. I, try, I tried to get the first recording down and it just didn't work this week. So hopefully this one worked. I love you guys. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to our extra YouTube channel. And I'm out.